So you've been playing guitar for a while, you're getting good at guitar. Now, how the hell do you record the guitar? <laughs> that seems to be the common question. And hopefully in this video, I'm gonna help you learn how to record your guitar. Bradley, hope you are doing well as always. So, the other week I posted a video talking about the new STL plugin. And after that video, in the comments section, I was getting asked a lot how I record my guitar parts, which is, you know, thank you for asking for the people I've been asking and people asking me on Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, and I should say, actually, the backing track of from that video, if you saw that, is going to be going up on my Patreon. Uh, account so a little little plug for patreon there if you uh, if you're not aware that I am on there so if you want to support me and get some little cool goodies now and then and behind the scene videos I like to post on there now and then as well so um, yes you can get that back in track on patreon now and other ones as well coming up so obviously in that video I was using a plugin and 95 percent of the time I am using a real amp so I thought I would just share what I do and what I use to record my guitar and hopefully this will help a few things, give some ideas. Um, all the stuff I'm using, I'll put links in the description box below. There'll be a little cheeky affiliate link in there which just gives a bit of pennies back to me if you do decide to get anything. But this is not an advertisement, this is just what I use. Everything I'm about to show you I have bought with my hard earned cash, all right? So, it starts with guitar. That's a given, all right? So today I'm playing my good old Telecaster, my Lola Telecaster, all right? And then I'm, uh, hopefully uh, you will be seeing some new shots now. I'm going guitar into my little board I've got, which uh, changes day by day, uh, week to week, but this is my little kind of home studio board. And then it's coming out of the board and then going into my amplifier, okay? So for today, I'm using my Fender Supersonic amplifier. Great amp, I've had it since December 2013. Cracking little amp. Now on top of the Supersonic, you will see a white box. <laughs> you may know what this white box is. You may have seen it in other people's videos and stuff like that. Um, to me, it's one of the best pieces of kit I have bought in a long time. So this is the Two Notes Capital X. Now, I know bits about it. You know, I have done the classic bloke thing of you buy it, you sell it, you leave it. Um, but basically, it's the way I look at it. It can, it can be 
uh, used in multiple different ways. You can use it as like a, um, an attenuator where you have the amp on using the amp speaker and then that way you can control, you know, you can have the, the amp on 10 if you wanted and then you're controlling the volume from the actual Captor X itself. You can do it as that and you can use it how I'm using it right now where I'm bypassing the speaker in the amplifier and the Captor X is basically uh, working as a cabinet simulator, an IR box, I guess you can look at it uh, and you can call it that. You can also use it as the amp, no, using the amp speaker and using it as the attenuator and going out and using it as, as a speaker simulator as well. You can do that, but I'm not doing that today because of volume really. And, and also I kind of like it. So I've got the speaker set up in the Captor X, which you can do using an app um, on your on your phone, that is. And I've I, I found what I liked and I've left it as that. And then basically out of the two note Captor X is two XLR leads. And they are going <laughs> behind my kind of guitar rack here and then into my audio interface. So the audio interface I use is a Focusrite 2i2. I've had this for, oh good seven years at least, surely. Uh, and then out of the interface, it's going via a USB cable into my Mac. Um, sorry if you've seen a very messy desk, what are you gonna do? I'm working, I'm working here, people. So my interface has just got, you know, you've got two sockets there for the for the XLR um, cable, so you can also plug directly into it from my guitar if I really wanted to, but I like as much as possible using real amps. So out of my audio interface into my Mac, and then I've got these two speakers here, uh, which are fairly affordable speakers to be honest. Uh, I need to update them actually very soon, but they're the M Audio speakers, which probably cost me, I think 90 pounds. I don't know how many years ago I got that, um, but they do the job, they do the job. And then so now you're about to hear, um, just from the, the camera mic here, but how I'm hearing my guitar. That's from the speakers. So I'm using a real amp, but I'm not using the speakers in the amp. It's going into the two notes Captor X, which is um, an amp simulator. Like I say, I found speakers I like in, on, the, on the app. And now, uh, Spotify has popped up. Um, that is then coming through the sound of my monitor speakers here, uh, which I've got them up fairly loud at the moment so you could hear it. So that is just the amp there. I've got no other pedals turned on whatsoever. Hopefully that's sounding kind of all right for the camera microphone. And then I use Logic to capture it all. That's my DAW, uh, my door, as uh, the hip people would say. And that's it really. Um, so it's, um, as I always say, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know, before turning on any pedals, you wanna get a good sound with the amp. So now I'm hearing my guitar through these speakers, I know how it's gonna sound straight off the bat, really. And then any kind of effects I wanna add on, like now if I kick in the overdrive, I can hear it back. So, that's what it's, so for me, having this set up, I'm always ready to record. So if I'm shooting a YouTube video, I can just get my camera out, I can turn my lights on. Everything is ready for me to record straight away. If I'm, you know, uh, doing a, a session, you know, people will contact me, ask me to play, you know, guitar parts on their tracks and whatnot. I'm always there, ready. I can, you know, hit record, done. Uh, even if I've got a song idea, I can just load Logic up. I don't have to get a mic and faff around setting up mics in front of my amp. I can load up Logic, and then push record, put the idea down, it's there. And then if I choose to go back, <laughs> you know, to listen to it back to uh, try and write a song to it, I can. So it just makes, you no, know, my workflow 
super quick because I'm just always there. If I'm t now a lot of times when I'm teaching people on Skype, and I'll actually it happened the other day, I'll, I'll come up a little groove on a, on a loop, and then I can record it. I can send it to them. Right, have a bash on that. You know what I mean? Or I can send little ideas to them and things like that. What I've recorded, record it in the lesson, send it to them. Done. Um, so it just makes you know work workflow super super quick. Something also to bear in mind is the kind of output and volume level. So if we go over to my computer here, you can see these two sidebars right here. Now if I hit the guitar, you can see that left one is kind of going up quite a bit. So I've turned it down to minus four, and also on the interface you can control it. What I really like about the focus right is that when I hit it, you can see there's green lights kind of flashing there. Now if I do that and I turn up the volume, you can see it goes red. Red's bad, you don't want to see red. And then also on the screen here, you can see it's shooting right up there. So then if I turn it back down again, it's not as no high output. Because the last thing you want when recording guitar is the guitar set or any kind of, if it's vocals, drums, anything, is clipping. Um, which basically is how distortion happened. Um, you know, having the microphone too hot, too much volume being pounded into it. Well, from the microphone going into the, the DAW. And that's how clipping happens. Now you can use kind of uh, you know, overload, overdrive, clipping as, in an, as an advantage. But a lot of times if you're already playing with overdrive and you, if you ever record anything and you hear that <coughs> happening, you don't want that. So what that usually means is that your, your uh, volume input level is too high for the DAW, for Logic, GarageBand, Pro Tools, whatever it is you're using. So make sure you're not clipping, all right? So as you can see here, it's not super loud now, you know, we're in the green. If I'm in the red, then you're gonna start clipping, all right? And then you just, you don't want that. And of course as well, if I wanted to, once I record my track, you can add, you know, use you know, a lot of, lot of uh, DAWs, you know, even if you're using GarageBand, they have cool little effects built in them. Obviously you can get plugins as well. In the past, if I've recorded something and afterwards I'm like, oh, that'd be nice if I had a bit of reverb or a bit of delay added on. I have used in the past, you know, the effects built into Logic or one of my plugins, but the, the stuff in Logic, some of the plugins what already come with it, is really, really good. So, um, yeah, in the past I'm like, oh, I need a bit of reverb here. But what I played at the beginning was all off my board. You know, that was my Seymour Duncan Aqua 5, the Ultraphonics, um, and then reverb coming from the new neighbor Merce with a bit of delay from the Boss DD3. So hopefully this gives you a little insight of how I record guitar and also it gives you a little insight in how you can record guitar. Like I say, I use the two notes Captor X to capture, you know, my amp basically so that you can hear it. <laughs> if I didn't have that and what I've done many, many times in before, I would get a microphone, you know, a good old SM57 and it'd be the same thing really, except I'll be using the speaker from the amplifier. So the, the SM57 would be in front of the uh, the amp. Uh, you don't want it center on, kind of, if you go center and then to across uh, a little bit, you don't want it too center. And then an XLR from the mic going into my interface and then that way. Um, obviously that I won't be recording in stereo there, it'll just be one mic. You can get two mics, set them up, but then you've got to be careful of this word phasing. Um, that's a whole other issue right there. Sometimes phasing's good, you know, we like phase pedals, phase 90 pedals and whatnot. But a lot of times in recording terms, phasing you don't want, um, unless you're doing it deliberately. So basically it's trying to make sure, no, in, lay in layman's terms, trying to make sure the microphones are at the same uh, distance from the, from the cab and that way you don't get any phasing happening. So that's what I would do if I didn't have a two notes Captor X. I do really recommend it. I, I love it for, for recording, especially if volume is an issue and that way I can, you know, my amp now is on four and a half. And if I wasn't going for the two notes and I was going through the speaker and the amplifier, 
that would be so bloody loud right now in this room. Uh, my wife would be whinging at me for being incredibly loud and that the walls would be shaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I'd have to be on about one and a half, two, if I was recording at home, through the amp speaker. But through the two notes, I don't have that problem. Um, but let me know, have you done any recording before? Have you struggled with a recording? Um, but this is the way I record 95% of the time when I'm at home. Um, obviously, if I'm in a recording studio, I'm using microphones, I'm using the speaker from um, the amplifier. Uh, a lot of times you can you know, use just one uh, mic. Sometimes you might want three or four. You can mic behind the amp, you can mic in front of the amp, you can mic uh, in the actual room itself and then blend all that together to create one big sound. You know, it's like what Steve Ray Vaughan would do live. He would play through four amps all at the same time and he would treat that as one big speaker. So he was going through many different speakers, but he would set each amp up differently, and then boom, that was his big tone, you know. But of course, if he plugged straight into a Super Reverb, it'd still sound like Steve Ray Vaughan, but that's what he used to help how he felt capture his sound. Anyway, I hope that helped. I hope that's given you a little insight. Um, if you got any extra tips, throw them in the comment section below. It'd be great, and let's share some ideas and use uh, the comment section as the beautiful thing, what it can be and should be as like a lovely public forum. Um, but no, hopefully that's helped. Let me know how you get on. If you've recorded any guitar and, this, and from this idea, send it to me. DM me on Instagram or something, I wanna hear it. You know, it'd be cool to see how you're getting on. And I'll see you next time. So hopefully that's helped. Me and my lovely Telecaster bid you a beautiful farewell and I'll see you next time. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, all that kind of stuff so you can get notified. And also sign up to my mailing list, which you can do in the comment section, not comment section, sorry, description box below. Anyway, I've been Mike Bradley, you've been you. Lots of love as always. Mike Bradley signing out. Bye.